Hello, and as always, welcome to my home lab. I'm going to be doing a quick video today demonstrating the ability of Metasploit to use SOX 4A proxies and proxy chains through each other. The configuration I'm going to have is two local machines, one configured with a Clally 2017 build, which is going to be the main host for the implant I've set down on a machine, and a 2020 build. I'll demonstrate how this works on a bit of paper in a second, but the idea is, is we're going to be routing all the traffic from the 2020 Cali box through Metasploit on the 27 box, all sitting on the same subnet within my same virtual machine network. Now this problem was to help a friend of mine, and this is just the video I'm using to explain it. First things first, I'm a Hyper-V connoisseur, but in this lab what we've got configured is three machines. The first is a 2017 Cali box, which is going to be my main target for the implant I'm going to drop down on the Windows machine. Next, we have the Cali 2020 box, followed by the Windows target machine. Now, to make everything a little bit easier, I have disabled antivirus, including real-time protection, so I can more easily create an MSF payload, which, when executed, will call back to my Cali 2017 machine. Next. We need to configure the Kali 2017 machine and MSF console by configuring an exploit multi-handler to listen on the 172.16.66.0 slash 24 network. Now we have our architecture configured. The next thing is to drop the actual payload itself on the Windows machine, have it call back into our 2017 Kali box, then configure a SOX 4A proxy listening on port 1080. This should be reachable both internally to the Kali boxes and Windows because they're on the same subnet. But for this instance, we're going to pretend that the Windows box is on a separate external network. Now the way we're going to prove this connectivity is different is in two ways. First, we're going to perform a scan for port 139 and port 445 internal on the local loopback interface within the Windows machine. Then we're going to perform the same scan but from an Nmap perspective. This should demonstrate that while we're in the Windows machine we can access those ports but scanning from outside should either list the ports as filtered or should be blocked entirely and will be listed as closed. I will then configure the proxy SOX 4A within the MSF console on the 2017 box I will add a route to the session, that is the implant, on the Windows machine, and then I will try performing a proxy chains Nmap scan from both of the machines, one using the loopback on the 2017 box, and the other on a separate 2020 box to prove that we now have connectivity with the Windows environment. Finally, I'm going to perform a MSF console proxy chains from the 2020 box into the 1080 port on the 2017 box to prove that we have SOX access and therefore showing the ability that we can now use our 2017 implant machine and also a 2020 Kali machine by redirecting and configuring routes between the two. Now we have all of that theory out of the way, we can get on with the main task which is configuring this entire setup. The very first thing I'm going to do is test from within the Windows machine that the port 139 and 445 are accessible but are blocked when we're trying to scan from the subnet. This is going to set us up to prove and demonstrate our ability to proxy through both the 2017 box and the 2020 box. As I said, the initial thing we're going to do is use the test net connection commandlet in PowerShell for port 139 to scan our IP address which is .26. We're going to wait for this to finish and what you should see is no errors being thrown for a start and also it should return and say it's true this port is open as you can see it says tcp test succeeded we can also run this again for port 445 and then after that i will demonstrate that it doesn't work for a made up port of 4455 this should this should demonstrate that actually if the port doesn't exist or isn't open for whatever reason then you can see the TCP connection will fail and will return a false state for TCP test succeeded. We now need to verify that our IP address of our Windows machine or our Windows target machine 
is indeed 172.16.66.26. Next, we're going to jump onto the 2017 Cali box and then show using Nmap that even though we can access that IP address of 172.16.66.26 from within the Windows machine itself, we cannot scan the same port. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run a TCP scan, a connect scan on that IP address for port 139 and port 445, which was 172.16.66.26. And you should see this return either filtered or closed to demonstrate that actually those ports are closed. So filtered is very typically there is probably a firewall in the way, and I know for a fact because I've ensured that the firewall for this Windows machine has been configured. After that, I'm going to come back to the Windows machine and ensure that antivirus and threat protection is turned off. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create an MSF Venom payload on our Kali 2017 machine and we're going to drop it onto this box. What that's going to do is it's going to connect back to the 2017 machine, and because this isn't a lesson in bypassing antivirus or AMSI, it's just about using the proxy. We're just going to turn antivirus off to make it easier for ourselves. We now need to go back to our 2017 box and configure Metasploit to start a listener and also need to configure MSF Venom to connect back to our Kali 2017 box, which is 172.16.66.25. That's what I will do is I will run MSF Venom, set the payload to Windows slash x64 metapreter reverse HTTPS. We're going to set the architecture as x64 and set the file type as exe because it's going to be Windows. The L host is going to be the value we just copied, although I didn't actually copy that value. It's going to be 172.16.66.25 and the port to listen on is going to be 443. We're going to output that to slash temp exploit.exe. At the same time, we will use exploit multi handler. We're going to set the L port to 443. We're going to set the L host to host. Well, I've got that configured. Oh no, I've not set the payload yet, so we'll set the payload, which is why I copied and pasted that before. I'm going to set the L host to 172. 66.25, we'll have a quick look at our options and we can see everything seems to be configured correctly. We can now see that the payload has been copied to slash temp exploit.exe. Just to speed the process up a bit, I'm going to run this exploit in the background. So now we should have a we should have a socket listening on our Kali 2017 box on port 443. And now I need to copy the payload via SSH onto my primary Windows machine. So I've already got a nice payload open. This was the command I used, so I'm going to use the SCP command. I'm going to copy it from 25, which is my Kali box on my local subnet. I'm going to copy slash temp slash exe, and I'm going to copy it to a folder on my desktop called tools, which I've configured not to be flagged by Windows Defender. So that's been copied across. Now we need to go back into our Windows machine, which is our target, and copy the exploit.exe across and run it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize this for you. I'm going to show you the 2017 box that's listening. And hopefully when we double click this, we should see some sort of callback on the screen behind in a second. There we go. The connection seems to have come back. For all intents and purposes, we're now done on the Windows machine itself, but we can just show that we can interact with the session. We'll have a look at the sessions. We can communicate with session one. We'll just get the UID just to show that we can actually communicate, and then we'll background that session again. What we need to do now is use an auxiliary module called server socks 4 a now this is the built-in SOC server that comes packaged along with Metasploit. And there's only two options. You can set the bind port. We're just going to leave it on 0000 because that's just going to listen on all interfaces. 
and we're going to leave the server port default. So this is the port that we're going to listen to on our local 2017 machine, which is going to be our proxy server. So we're just going to run that and configure the proxy server. If we have a look at jobs, we can see that our exploit multi-handler is running in the background, and we can also see that our SOX 4A proxy is running. And again, we can see that our session is still there, and we still should be able to interact with it. What I'm going to do now is configure the routes on Metasploit. Now the idea behind this is, is if I just do a quick demonstration of the listening ports, we should see 1080, which is listed as Ruby, which is what Metasploit is running under, is listening. This is the proxy server. Any time a packet goes to this 1080 on a local Kali 2017 machine, Metasploit is going to receive it, the Ruby engine is going to look at it, and it's going to determine where to send it. At the moment, because there is no root information, as I've just shown here in Metasploit, it's not going to know what to do. But what I'm going to say is if you get an IP that's to a specific subnet, I want it to be routed to this MSF Venom, or sorry, this MSF Venom payload, which we have configured through our multi handler. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a root for 172.16.66.0 slash 24 and we're going to say we want it to go through session one so now we can see that anything that goes on that subnet with that mask is going to hit that session one which is going to be sent to the payload which is sitting on our windows machine and interact with that network stack as if we were actually within the network itself now that we have that configured we can use the tool called proxy chains the first thing you need to do with proxy chains is just make sure the configuration file is all correct. As I stated before, that we are using the 1080 port and we are using the local host. We're going to just make sure that SOX4 for proxy chains configuration file is talking to our local host on port 1080, which it already is. Now I'm going to run the proxy chains for nmap-st dash p139 and 445 uh, and we're going to try and contact the windows machine remember before this was showing that the ports were both filtered however this time you can see the proxy chains is intercepting that call sending it through metasploit which is coming out on the local machine on windows and it's scanning itself internally and because we're able to do that, we're able to bypass the firewall, which is very, very nice. I can also just do another quick check and show that, again, if I run default nmap, nothing's going to happen because it's not going through the proxy and it's filtered. So remember, the top one, we've sent it to our SOX proxy in Metasploit. In Metasploit, we could configure the route going out to our session, which is running locally on Windows and will interact with that network stack to generate traffic there, not from our subnet itself. Now that's everything we need to do on the 2017 box, but because we're listening on a port that anything on the subnet can communicate with, we can actually pop over to a Kali 2020 box. And all that's needed this time is a configuration of proxy chains. We don't need to do anything with Metasploit just yet. We just need to make sure when we come to the bottom of the configuration file, instead of 127.0.0.1, which was there last time, we're going to give it the IP address of our Kali 2017 box. Now remember, we're currently in the Kali 2020 box and we're pointing the proxy chain SOX proxy at port 1080 on Kali 2017 box. And we can demonstrate this with the same nmap scan we performed before. So we're just going to scan for the same ports, 139.445 give it the same options and we're going to scan our Windows machine without proxy chains and this should result in those two ports being filtered as we can see which is a very classic indication of a firewall now we can rerun that using proxy chains it's going to connect from our 2020 box which we're on to our 2017 box it's going to detect the port which is going to be the proxy it's going to go into Metasploit, and Metasploit, because we've configured it with the roots, is going to send it internal to the Windows network. And as we can see, up here, those ports are filtered, but now they're open when we use proxy chains. You can also do a port scan within Metasploit itself. This is also going to demonstrate that we can use Metasploit on 
the 2020 box through the proxy which we've configured with Metasploit on the 2017 box. Now first things first, you can configure Metasploit in two ways. You can configure it using the set proxies command, which can be a bit temperamental. That's why I prefer using proxy chains itself. First, I'm going to run this. This is running without proxy chains, as you can see from the command here. But I'm just going to use the auxiliary, I uh, can't spell auxiliary, scanner, port scanner module, TCP. We're going to have a look at the options. We're going to set the R host to be the Windows machine, which is 6626. I'm going to set the ports to be 139 and 445. And we're just going to run that. This should, be, this should behave exactly the same as Nmap without the use of proxy chains. And we can see that when we did the scan, nothing happened. In our final step, we're going to configure our Kali 2020 box with Metasploit to talk through our Kali 2017 box with the SOX 4A proxy listening, which will route traffic through to our Windows environment, demonstrating we were able to bypass the firewall and were able to use a Kali 2020 box and a Kali 2017 box with a bit of smart proxying. Now I've noticed a really weird bug. It may be a bug or it may be a lack of understanding. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run the proxy chain scan for Nmap for those ports on our 2017 box in a loop which sleeps for one second. So what this is going to do is it's almost acting like a keep alive for the machine. Not sure why it's doing this, it's just being a bit annoying, I'm fed up with it now. So I'm just going to use that and then demonstrate using the proxy chains dash Q flag from our 2020 blocks. All you need to do is run proxy chains Use dash Q. Dash Q will suppress all those messages you saw about chains passing back and forth. When you're using something like Metasploit, it, it, it creates a whole lot of noise. So you just use Q to suppress it. We're just going to load that up. Just do a quick check that we are still able to get Nmap scans back. Yes, those ports are still open. We're going to use the auxiliary scanner port scan TCP that we used before. We're going to configure the same R host. So remember, this is the Windows box. And we are going to use the same ports. And we can verify that using show options. Now, when I run the port scanner, what's going to happen is it's going to go from my Kali 2020 box with Metasploit running through the SOX proxy on the 2017 box and be routed to the session which we have dropped on our Windows machine. And as has been demonstrated, unlike before, this time we have the TCP port open, which shows that we can use our 2020 box and 2017 box in tandem. Anyway, that's just a bit of a quick little proxy trick that you can use to solve some of your problems, particularly with some of the exams that I know people have been trying to use both the 2020 box and 2017 box on.